Hi there, it's Sarah from Standing Up to Scoliosis and the Scolio Temple. I just um I just thought I'd do a quick video and I've done some videos before about the metal rods, the surgery, um and why I had them taken out and you know, problems they caused, um, such as chronic pain and stiffness, you know, um, you know, the list went on. But I've just uh, thought I wanted to do a quick video because I've seen some other people do some videos um about like having issues with rods and chronic pain and I just like want to talk about because it's such a huge decision whether to have the surgery or not and like you know I have mentioned before that I was all right for six years I had no pain to start with after my surgery and I have heard this story quite a lot with people I've met and spoke to and I've seen do videos online who do end up with chronic pain with rods in and that usually it doesn't happen until later down the line, like six to ten years sort of down the line at the sort of time periods. Like, but I'm quite vague on time periods because I feel like people like don't fully talk about it, like aren't fully honest. Like they're they're sort of like everyone's trying to put on an act and image that they're OK and then, um, you know, because you you got to look strong, haven't you, in life? And people don't like to admit their vulnerabilities and what and things that are going wrong. And also, you're told by doctors so often, you know that they're like you shouldn't be in chronic pain. That like some people are told scoliosis doesn't cause pain. Some people, you know, are told that if you have the surgery, like you know, it should be helping your condition. So you should be in like less pain than, you know, before having the surgery, like with the scoliosis. So obviously that's the aim. And and to be quite frank, chronic pain is just a horrendous condition to live with, especially of the spine. It's It can be disabling, totally disabling. So I just feel like, I feel like you shouldn't have the surgery just for cosmetic reasons. Like, I feel like, I just feel like people, more people need to be honest about what they're going through who've had the surgery. And that's not, because I really don't want people to think that my channel and me is anti-surgery. Because I'm not anti-surgery. Anti like, I'm not, I'm not saying that things weren't not, you know, if I didn't like the scoliosis before the surgery. I mean, me personally, I would like to chance to try and help it without having done surgery. But... I know realistically how hard that would have been. Um, I know my life would have gone totally different, a different direction if I hadn't had the surgery. So, and also I now know that I've had the rods out. I know that you can live without pain having still had the surgery. So I'm not anti-surgery, okay? I'm like, I'm just, I'm just pro-truth. I'm pro-open and honestness. And like, I just feel like, yeah, like, it maybe people should have the surgery but then have rods taken out because let's face it co common sense tells you that that's going to cause pain but but why i'm doing this video is why was i all right for six years to start with and why do we hear some stories where some people are sort of saying they're not in pain you've had the surgery and, and make out like it's all good and stuff and like I don't know, obviously each person's story could be totally different. I'm not saying I think anyone's lying or like sort of pretending that they don't have pain when they do. Like maybe it's possible some people did have more pain before they had the surgery and yeah, they still have some pain, but it's not as bad or I don't know, maybe it's even possible that 20 years that like down the line someone is still not having pain who has solid spinal fusion rods in like I don't know common sense tells me that that is and and kind of laws of biology and science tell me that's highly unlikely to be true um but yeah I can't speak for anyone else so but let me explain why I think I got in pain six years after and why I think I was all right up until then so there's lots of different theories and obviously let's first just just look at just just biology in general and science and the fact that our cells are dying and regenerating constantly all the time anyway we are always morphing and changing as biological beings we're always in a state of flow 
and change and death and regrowth like because we're always having gravity forces acting on us we're always breathing in and expelling stuff out that we all know this like i've heard maybe you've heard this like every seven years we have all our cells are dead and we have all new ones in our body we had a total death and rebirth of our cycle so six years down the line to me is almost seven years isn't it it's almost a whole cycle of death and rebirth and it's towards the end of that cycle where my body is sort of just given up it's just gone oh my god it's got to the last part of the cycle where it wants to try and die and rebirth and it's got two rods in the way so you know one theory is that they're not meant to be in long term they they sort of get in the way of natural flows and cycles within the body because they're stuck and objects blocking like flow of blood flow and you know all this stuff um so that's one theory another theory that a friend of mine come up with which i'm not so convinced of is that I was in no pain before the surgery so because I was young and flexible. I was only 16 that maybe like six years down the line was like when I was like 20, it was like 20, what's that for? 22. Maybe like, cause I started my per menstruation late. Apparently you go and growing for six years after you start your periods. I started when I was 16. So Maybe that my bones have fused and stopped growing, like, and that was why I woke up in chronic pain. So that's another theory. Um, I mean, there's so many theories because some people have pain straight away as soon as they've had the rods put in. And as I said, other people claim they don't have any pain, really. Like, maybe when they say they don't have any pain, they mean they just don't have any really bad pain. Like, it's just sort of mild and there all the time, like, achy. Because it... Like, you can, the weird thing is, right, pain is about proprioception, isn't it? If you can't perceive something, you can't, some people have an illness where they're unable to feel pain. So, like, you know, me, for six years, I didn't feel pain, but I also didn't, wasn't aware my scoliosis was growing. I didn't sense that either. So, but... I would I it, it, I would say that not feeling pain was it was a good thing at that time because I was also very active. I was doing professional dancing. I lived a very busy, active life. I did get tired out quicker than most people. I, I, I was more tired after a day's hard work. You know, I, I would have some pain and aches at the end of the day, but then I would rest and it would be gone in the morning. So this is why when I say I had no pain for six years, I mean, I didn't have any chronic pain. I was fine. I was active and healthy and well, you know, most of the time I just got a bit aches at the end of the day. But like, you know, this chronic pain, like, so yeah, one theory is that you know, my, I become a fully adult, my bones stopped growing, they got stuck, and I ended up in pain, another theory, um, I mean, when I say got stuck, I mean got stuck, because they were no longer growing and expanding, that it jarred in with the rods, so, I mean, all of these theories could be partly true, um, another theory, of course, is I did having a scan arthritis and disc problems above and below the rods so maybe those started earlier on and because i didn't get an mri scan until years down the line i wasn't aware of that so could have been those problems back then i did have all my pain was around where the rods were as soon as i woke up in chronic pain it wasn't a mysterious condition to me some people get diagnosed with chronic pain or fibromyalgia or whatever and the doctors like don't really know what's causing it and usually it has been a past trauma or injury where the pain is but sometimes the pain can sort of spread all around the body and it can seem more mysterious but in my case it was it felt like an elephant in the room the whole time so I was like telling doctors this the whole time like why am I in so much pain why does it feel so stiff all around where my rods are and yet I was ignored for 14 years. Like I literally went, I paid privately as well. Like surgeons do not want to take these rods out. 
and now that I've had the rods taken out, I'm not saying that I don't have any, haven't had issues and problems. I'm not saying it hasn't been super hard recovering from all the nerve damage from the in chronic infections I ended up getting. And then the, the more scar tissue and damage and nerve damage that was happened to me. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I think that everyone should have rods out who has a scoliosis surgery. I mean, new surgery, they put even more screws in each joint. So maybe, maybe with the newer surgeries that are not the old spinal fusion type where there's two solid rods and like only screws. I think I had three. I didn't have Harrington rods. I had the titanium sort of ones um, that had screws at the top and the bottom and then a third lot in there. So I didn't have them on every joint. So um, obviously someone's experience of that type of surgery or even the tethering one, you know, different surgeries would cause different pains, obviously, like or different likelihoods of chronic pain. So I, yeah, I can't talk for people who've had a different type of surgery to me to whether they're having chronic pain or not um and then equally yeah like how easy is it then to have screws and rods taken out if you have had a surgery where they've been put in every joint up the spine i mean it kind of feels like oh those bones that have had the screws in then might be weaker like then having because you've got so much more of a structure in each part it might be more traumatic to have it taken out so yeah i don't envy people who've had the newer surgeries even though that there is probably likely they are in less chronic pain than the ones who've had the spinal fusion surgeries and then the harrington ones were even worse i mean i have spoke to more people who had the original harrington rod surgery and yeah, it sounds awful. Like they had it up the whole spine. I only had it in my thoracic spine. So again, not anti-surgery, like, but I'm also not trying to go for popularity. I'm not trying, I've never been a popularity queen in my life. It probably won't surprise anyone because I am just too honest. Like maybe people think I'm like a bit complaining and negative and I should be like more positive and supportive of everything that's happened to me. But like, maybe I should, maybe I should be talking about all the positives of the fact that I've had the surgery and now I've had the rods out and how, how positive it is that I had, had the correction of curve that I did manage to get, which is not fully straight. Um, and I will admit that it gives me like because I have got soft tissues and the curve is straighter than it was initially I will admit that that does give me more proprioception and more awareness of where the spine actually should be to where it was before but I still like to think knowing what I know now about what ther you know therapies can do I was still I would still like the chance to try to help and correct the curve without having never had the surgery. But again, my curve was only just over 50 degrees. It was only just in the surgery category. And, you know, I've heard lots of stories of people who've had very successful lives and not had the surgery with their spine at that level. So, and I've seen stories of people getting fairly good corrections of their spine when it's been that level so again i can't talk for someone who's got a bigger curve and and i had no pain before i had my surgery either so i really i really do need to try and be positive and embrace where i am now in my life um but equally i don't see why people shouldn't give honest feedback about what they think you know from their experience was was the best sort of treatment and idea or not um for their health condition but yeah it's a shame that I can't go back in time and do the sliding door thing and live another life where I try and correct it with no surgery at all and compare you know where I'm at and which one which life was better you know um all I know is that <laughs> the way that life went for me more and more getting in more and more chronic pain more and more stiffness the longer the rods were in um, oh, and by the way, there is another theory to why I got in chronic pain. Because I did professional dance, I did have a bad ankle sprain. 
then I was putting a lot of impact on my joints in the what I was doing every day compared to like a normal person doing an office job or something like that so I suppose it could be possible that if you live the right lifestyle and you don't you do a job that's not so impactful on the joints um, and you don't have an injury in another joint like an ankle which is really important to, to the whole alignment of the rest of your body like I have heard that there are more incidences of chronic pain in the center and the core and the spine when people have injuries in joints further away like more distally away from the center which makes total sense when you when you understand how all the body forms and connects and you know spirals and it makes total sense if you that ankle and out that then there'd be more compression on the spine like but that chronic pain didn't happen straight after the ankle injury like it come like a couple years after so again that doesn't make total sense to me because i would have been in pain earlier if the, that ankle sprain had caused it and also just like that was doing professional dance like when i woke up in chronic pain i was on a dance job but it was a really easy job like i was having such a lazy easy lifestyle i was like the the job was going to get harder if i'd carried on the contract but to start with i was only doing like one show a day in the evening um and i had i was like lying in every morning and doing whatever i wanted the whole day it was like a piece of cake lifestyle and the dancing in the show itself was so easy like it wasn't hard training like i've done so much harder dancing like like full on non-stop like full time all day like dance classes for three years before and that didn't cause me chronic pain so I, I would actually say like I would actually say the thing that causes pain more than overuse is underuse and stiffness and stuckness like because when I did wake up in chronic pain it was stiff and stuck that I felt where the rods were so yeah i'm gonna actually say the more mobile and active you're able to stay the less pain you're going to be in like and now i've had the rods out i am able to i'm more mobile again everything's flowing again like everything's allowed to die and regenerate in my body again so i'm like not in chronic pain anymore yes i still get pain like sometimes like i'm still getting a bit of compression on the joint at the bottom where the disc was bulging out but that has gradually improved since the rods have come out um and so, yes yeah, so occasionally like i i overuse things like i could do too much gardening and i'm like lying down I'm in pain so i'm still getting pain but it's not chronic it it comes because of something i've done specifically um so yeah like I just think like if you've got chronic pain in your body like it's not mysterious there, there probably is a reason behind it like even people who don't have like rods in or something obvious like usually if you go see a physical therapist they're going to find like a cause of that pain um but anyway yeah like <laughs> i'm already presuming that i'm like totally unpopular in the scoliosis world and i'm not doing this channel to get followers i'm not doing it to make money like even though i am a qualified therapist i stopped working as a therapist quite you know a few years ago because of the chronic pain and issues i was having with my rods so yeah i would like to go back to working again and i'm like rehabbing myself to get there again but at the moment since i started my scoliosis facebook page and youtube channel I guarantee you it's totally like I'm not saying it's selfless because I was doing it for me like I I want people to comment on the things I'm writing I want other people to share things like I'm doing it to put out information because I want information back because I don't know everything like I, but the point I'm making is I don't have like a prerogative to make money I don't make any money from these YouTube videos I literally look at how many followers I have I don't have uh, subscribe people to make money like I'm not trying to be virtuous either like I am doing these pages for selfish reasons because I want information back you know I I'm writing books like I do want to go back to working as a therapist like so yeah maybe I'm sort of putting this out there for like hoping I'm going to go back and work again like I'm not trying to say oh yeah like I'm amazing I'm totally but I'm just kind of making the point that 
that I am being honest. Like, you can trust what I'm saying because I'm not relying on this to make a living at all. Like, and I haven't been ever since I started the channel. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm not... I'm not saying that I think lots of other people are lying all the time, but I think a lot of people aren't maybe telling the full truth of everything. Um, who knows? Like, yeah, I'm not saying, you know, maybe maybe there's some things that I've forgotten about and left out, like, but I really am trying to be totally transparent about my experiences on what's helped my scoliosis and I'll be the first to hold my hands up and say that it's not an easy health condition to try and help like although I'm all for physical and natural therapies and that's like what I'm trained in and what I believe in mostly you know I I definitely admit that going along that route and path like you know it is challenging because you're trying to like restructure your whole body like your body's like going in a cycle of death and life and regeneration and you're trying to say right no I don't like the way that you've gone initially and you're, you're going to try and break that all down and restructure it again like come on like first of all probably a lot of people don't have the time to do that like and secondly how do you go about doing that? Like, how do you go about restructuring and trying to realigning the brain to the body and like regenerating things? Like, that's not easy. Like, maybe some of my body broke down and damaged from from the illness and injury, and now it's like naturally rebuilding itself and it's feeling a lot better again. You know, like I don't take all the credit for everything that's happened to me. Maybe that surgery did more for me than I realized. Like. But, yeah, anyway, just, just, um, I just feel like mainly I just want awareness for people who are suffering silently with spinal fusion surgery. Um, I just think doctors, like, need to stop ignoring people and take them seriously when they're saying they've got chronic pain and there's an elephant in the room. Like, I just think it, it's inhumane to leave someone being tortured for that long when there could be a solution to end the torture and yeah it's confusing for a doctor because people seem to not be in pain to start with after having the surgery and some people will say that maybe they're not having much pain at all like their whole life with it but I don't know I can't speak for anyone else but common sense and logic and my own experience and a lot of other people I've met who've had the surgery sort of sort of say the same thing as me like I think um if you're getting arthritis and disc compression and stiffness like with time I think if that doesn't cause you pain I probably think there's something wrong with your nervous system that you're not feeling anything at all like um I think that's a bit concerning personally but don't I really don't want to talk against the surgery because I know a lot of people feel it's just their best like an only sort of option um I just sort of like wish more people got to try the alternative options first and doctors listened and believed you know that those things can help a lot of people and are possible um but we live in a world where that just isn't the case for many reasons probably mostly fine a lot of people will say it's all financial it's all about what fun what funds research what is researched and what makes people money because you have to invest money into research to then be able to make money from the results of what the research is showing is a good treatment that works <laughs> and yeah so a lot of these like treatments that research and things that go into it are usually like programs quick fixed sort of regimes like things that can be repeatable like and I don't think the human body's like that personally so you know like I'm just trying to create more awareness about what I think is really working and and another thing you know sadly is time like and you know do you see a yogi meditating on a mountain while holding time holding down like a full-time job like do you know what I mean like sadly but yeah sadly like you know maybe a lot of jobs and work environments aren't supportive of someone really trying to heal and re you know reinvent themselves um 
but um obviously some people do make it work they do find jobs um with in supportive environments um so totally i think it should be able to happen along with work you know if you're doing a job that's kind to your body um and gives you enough time enough free time to yourself like you can earn enough in that to also have you know not be like slave driven over hours um but yeah um i think you yeah. anyway like i really am trying to be honest and transparent i don't know why i feel the need to be so honest and put this out there so much i'm kind of starting to question now like like if other people aren't being aren't doing it why am i doing it so much but anyway um i don't know <laughs> um yeah maybe it's just like i don't know if it's just fighting for injustice and like feeling sorry for people who are just going through a lot of pain um and not wanting what happened to me to happen to like possibly my like my child i don't know i don't know why i'm doing this but for whatever reason i am and i'm putting it out there and i'm gonna put more out there keep doing it while it feels like the right thing to do for me um and yeah like if anyone wants to share anything back like like comment on my things like please like i really i really would love this like to be a more open community where people have more open honest conversation because you know we go through a lot and like i would really love us all to be supporting e each other really um yeah okay um <laughs> i always end my videos like this as well um but yeah i hope everyone's having a good day and um yeah over and out and this was my video just to recap about why i was okay initially after surgery and why i think i got in chronic pain later down the line um and yeah i just like wonder if anyone else can relate to this or comment on this video and so yeah, I went through the same. Oh gosh, yeah, doctors didn't listen to me. Or, you know, it's just nice to not feel so alone. Like maybe this is why I'm doing the videos because it just felt so lonely going through all this. Like, um, yeah, that's that's probably the main reason. Like I do like, like love it when people come in. I, like, I do love to hear back from people and know that I'm not, this is not all in my head. Like I was made to feel like I was crazy. It's in my head to be, in chronic pain and to be having PTSD for so long. So, um, yeah, please do comment and message me. Like, even if you've got a totally different opinion to me and you you love your surgery, you think it's great and you've had no pain for like 30 years, please comment. I really want to hear. I really want to hear. Like, I'd love to hear more positive stories about it all. Um, right. Thanks. Bye.